Okay, folks, good morning. And let's zoom in a little bit for this because we're going to get a little closer and we're going to do some uh, basing of these two stands. So, um, these are the two that uh, these are the two stands that we doing the basing material on last night. And actually, I just assumed that they were ready to go. Let's, uh, let's make sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're good here. All right, so. Four. I have to wake up Sleeping Beauty for or uh, swimming. Let's see if I can't knock this out. Some of you would be like, oh yeah, it's just two stands. It should be easy, right? Uh-huh. Takes time. It takes some time, so. This is, uh, Chocolate brown, the color I use for my most of my basing. All right, let's get some water. We're gonna probably have to cut some of this down a little bit to get it to flow. And let's get a brush. It's not horrible, but not one that is. I'm going to ruin because there is grit in this basin. All right. And all we're going to do is um, let's go ahead and do the. This is I usually when I paint, I don't have to um, wait for the drying. Because uh, I'm putting such thin letter, layers, I may have to wait on some drying here. So. Hopefully we could finish this this morning so you guys could see what these folks look like. And uh, we're gonna avoid these rocks. We're gonna leave the rocks in this, in the natural color with them. Uh, we'll, we'll end up highlighting them some when we get to the highlight colors, but the base color won't have any on the rocks. Or the intent is to not have any on the rocks. Half time for the game, okay. It's supposedly a game today, but I live in a football town, American football, of course. But I don't follow that stuff. And really don't know what's going on, especially this year, the year of the year of troubles. <laughs> I try to avoid any anything that's impacted by troubles. So here it's um, smooth sailing in the land of DBA. So, of course, of all the stages that uh, this basing is going to take, this is the one that takes the longest because you don't want to miss a spot and then have it glaring at you. You don't want to go through all this trouble and then rush this and then screw up everything you've done or have it not uh, look worthwhile. No. I used to, when I first started uh, doing these, I used to leave 
the edge of the stand in the ground color in the darkest of the ground color. I used to like that. And then I decided to do, I'm sure I saw someone do it, paint the edges of the stand black and I prefer that. But I am still painting the edges brown because um, when I paint black on it, it goes on smoother. And for the black, we're just gonna use cheap acrylic paint. Um, I've been using this stuff here, the paint. They say that the craft paints have less, they have more filler and less, or they tend to be flatter. Um, and I would agree with them with hearing that. So that's nice. I don't have to spray a, a coat on them or anything. So um, at this point, I wouldn't want to reseal everything. So the fields, the, the figures are, are sealed completely, but uh, the terrain is not. Um, that's just how I've always done it. No, no reason to add any more steps. I have enough different steps in my painting style, so there's no reason to slow myself down yet even more. So. Now, at some point you go, you, you end up having to just pick up the damn figure because you can't get in every, everywhere from the angles, but and that's the part where I end up getting brown paint on my fingers. So I'm going to try to avoid that because I don't want to trans pose that brown paint somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, I may be okay. If you get a little bit of brown paint on the rock, it's not the end of the world. Okay, that one's done. Now this one, we gotta be real. You don't follow the NFL either. And um, only, only Mitch and them follow the NFL. The only time I ever watched the NFL was um, in the early 90s when I didn't have cable. And that was the only thing on my TV. But I don't mind playing football games because I'm really doing something, but just sitting there and watching, nah, that's, <laughs> now this is too nice a brush. I'm not going to screw this guy up. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not that kind of painter. We'll use this one. Good morning, James. How are you? I'm up very early. I'm up at the time I always get up, 5 a.m. So what was unusual is I was up till late last night. Got 
um, a couple of folks that got my juices going last night on conversations. And um, I didn't get a whole lot of painting last night done, but I got a whole lot of talking. So if uh, if a monologue interests you, uh, check out, uh, well, it's still uploading. It's still um, rendering or whatever they call it. Um, it's still live. You know, if you guys watch my live thing, you can probably see it in good quality. But if you miss it, you need to wait about 12 hours because in the time that my um, the live session gets turned off, you got to wait about 12 hours for it to be uh, processed um, completely. It's not it's not viewable in very good quality for like 12 hours. That's about how long it takes YouTube to do their magic. So, <clears throat> um, just wait about 12 hours or sometimes might even be a little bit more than 12 hours. Um, that's what I've noticed. I don't do anything. I just turn the, the camera off and, uh, or the phone off and, um, and they do their thing. And, um, it's extremely difficult to view. It's I actually doesn't even show up on the, on the channel. So. Don't bother watching it if you can't catch it live for the next uh, day or so. That's what I've noticed. Now we're gonna have to mix up a tiny little bit. I think so. Just a wee bit. <laughs> Just a wee bit. weather report icon. Let's see what kind of a hot shithole it's going to be today. High of 88, low of 72. Well, I don't know what that means if, yeah, right now it's 74 degrees. I'm sure probably 95% humidity, no breeze out there. How about I just spend all weekend indoors? So ready for winter here. It can stay winter here for all I care. Oh, then I'll be outside. There won't be any painting. Now this these guys are tricky because the stands are so the the bases of the figures are close so close together, it's hard to cover everything um, on these guys. So grass is going to be my friend, and we're going to use it to cover up any boogers that we don't uh, like how they look. It looks like there's a piece of fiber of some sort there. There we go. Got rid of that. I want to get that. Uh, I don't want to get that painted in there.
Okay. Now let's go back to the original one and see if this guy is dry enough to take the next step. I think so. All right. How are we doing on time? Half hour? Yeah, we're not going to make it. Uh, do I want to use this for the other colors I'm going to put down? Yeah, I probably could do that. All right. Next color is going to be... Um, Nope. It's this one, isn't it? Yep. US Field Drab. We'll go pull out the last color also, which is the Sand. No. What's on the menu today after the base is complete? Well, <clears throat> in about a half hour, I gotta go wake up the sleeping princess, also known as my daughter. <clears throat> gotta take her to synchronized swimming practice. And uh, that runs about, well, she's gotta get ready. It starts about 8, 8.15. She's there about an hour and a half, then I'll come back. I'm sure I'll paint later on today, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't want to commit to anything. Um, we'll either work on the war wagon or more than likely the Hungarian spearman. We'll probably do the Hungarian spearman. And uh, whoa, I just wanted to build the war wagon. We painted that up last night. We're going to probably have to give it another coat of paint. But we'll wait on the other Hungarian war wagon to come in and then do them both more than likely. Oh, look, I got so distracted. I didn't even paint this part, but that's fine. We needed to give this thing another coat anyway, so no big deal. I'll improvise. Um, but probably the Spearman, the former Hungarian Spearman, the old Hungarian Spearman. And um, yeah. That's at least the plan, apt to change at any moment. <laughs> All right. Now, this is what we got this cardboard for. This is US Field Dram. We're giving this a dry brush. It's gonna be what I like to call a wet dry brush. It's not completely dry. And now we'll go over the rocks with the next two colors. We just don't wanna, we just don't wanna do it in the, um, we don't wanna do it with the first one. Otherwise it won't even look like a rock, so. Oh, look what I just saw. A little spot hiding underneath that rock there, upper brown. Okay.
there's another spot. Putting this extra paint to use. None of it's a problem. I can reach any of it. So if this keeps happening, it's not a big deal. Doing those decals or something like that. Yeah, you're up a creek if something happens after you're done. And we'll do the same with the other one over here. This brush may actually be too big for this. We'll try to get all the the bits we can. So your neck icon. Why does Google feel like they gotta tell me there's a new episode of Saturday Night Live? I don't watch that. Ah, oh, nosy. I don't watch that because it's not funny. <laughs> not anymore. cutting mat that's got a bunch of paint on it and I don't like running around with a phone with a bunch of icons up there. And maybe some makes it look like it's something important when it isn't. Let's see if we can get in and do take care of business when we go smaller. I don't want to go smaller because it could be a brush I could end up ruining. Oh, I know what's wrong. I got this chair to There we go. Just wondering why well, I was getting hunched over a little bit. My chair is in the wrong place. Hopefully I can get my big hat out of the way. Let's try this. Let's, there we go. How about like that? I gotta make it difficult to get my head in a way because otherwise it'll appear. I'm painting very close to we need more of a, we need more like that. And tighten that. There we go. I get my head in there because I'm painting without glasses, so. All right, let's see if we can. Yeah, we're going to have to get in here with a smaller brush. That's all right. We'll be gentle. Let's get everything we can get with this one. And we don't want to get one of our best candidates. We want to get one that's kind of on its way out. Let's see how this guy is. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit of a curve. So let's take some of this color here and this should be dry, right? Yeah, okay. And off to Hobbycraft. 
Excellent. Have fun. And we're just going to put some of this around the edge of the stand so that the colors kind of blend in there. And there's no risk of dry brushing it up on the armor if I do it like this. This takes a little bit of time, some patience. A little more, more we got to get in here and then we'll go up to the last shade step. shade is this one Iraqi sand which you can't read what it is you can't even see the Viejo number or anything I just know this one's Iraqi sand you know why because that's the one that doesn't have the numbers you can read on it I've used it so many times this is my go to one of my go to colors this triad of uh, basing colors are actually something I lifted off of um, the flame website. I think that's where I got this one from. I certainly got the desert one that I used from them. Yeah. This is my, uh, and here's my desert basing. I don't want to lose this. Of course, now I can go back and watch my painting videos if I forget what it is. So I've got three of them that I do. I've got one mix that I do for the desert. Um, that's English uniform, uh, underneath then green ochre and then dark sand. Uh, this one is chocolate Brown, us field drab and Iraqi sand. And I do some, I do one that I called African bases. And the reason I call it African bases is I did some figures from modern Africa, uh, wars, and it's more of a clay mix. And that one's flat earth, Brown sand, Iraqi sand. So. Anyhow, this is the this is the Bible. I don't want to lose that thing. So, well, it would be hard to forget this one, but the African one that I don't use very often um, would be an easy one to forget. I use that one for like my Indians as well. So more of a tropical basing. Mm, dry brushy.
when you start getting in closer to this, you need to just get your hands in there and be able to turn this thing around because you need more maneuverability than having it on that stand is going to help you with. Okay. Hey Kevin, how are you? What's well, really early there? You're a pro. I know you probably haven't gone to sleep yet. <laughs> Three fifteen. You don't do saving daylight savings time, so um, time difference might be a little bit different. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do a marathon paint session today. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of an unusual thing. Uh, I'm like, well, I had the opportunity to do it last weekend, so let's jump on that because you never know when I'm going to be able to do that. But I think that was an excellent use of a day. Got a lot done last weekend, so... Oh no, we can't have that. We don't want paint on the edge of that. <laughs> Distracting. This stuff's gonna call to get in a smaller brush maybe. It's about as good as we're gonna be able to get with that one. Where's my little brush here? We're right, gonna do the same thing. Let's add some water. Do a watered down version of this. Ooh, not so watered down.
get some of this cheap. Uh, here's this is one of these items that this bastard likes to make a mess. Um, I really need to remember to hold this thing upside down. Uh, the pandemic has really cut down on craft paints. You can't find them anymore in stores. Um, they're cleaned out. Um, I think it's people bought that don't normally buy. And places just aren't restocking like they used to. So, and I'm not gonna Amazon this. This is, this is like a less than $2 paint normally, this whole thing. And uh, I'm not paying a ton of money for it. Um, let's see, do I even want this on here? Let's not do that. Let's put it here. See, I get any on me? No, not this time. Not this time, pal. All right, let's get a brush that... Um, This one should be fine. It doesn't have to be a great brush to do the edges. Plenty of paints here at Walmart. I, I'm planning on going to Walmart again. Um, they pissed me off last year and I don't want to deal with Walmartians, the people. But they did that nonsense last year where they weren't going to sell handgun ammo to the public. And I'm not going to be treated like a criminal for other people's actions. So um, I'm just just assume not go there, um, especially in these days and day and age where there's all kinds of weird people there anyways, and especially with the pandemic. So I am fine. Never going to a Walmart again. I go to one if I have to, but I don't have to. So um, Towards the end, this is where I was getting my brushes. These brushes come from Walmart. I don't think I'll be buying. From, I don't. I don't think I'll be buying them from them again. It's just not worth it. Every experience in there is just really unpleasant. You know, the people that work there are grumpy. The people that shop there are grumpy. It didn't used to be that way, but it's like, nah, I'll just avoid going to Walmart. I've been there in about over a year. But, you know, I don't have a problem with other people going there. It's not like, you know, I'm going to shun somebody because they go there, but I just assume not go there. But that's where all these brushes came from, so I'll have to buy my Ching Chang brushes from somewhere else. I'll order them, but, you know. Last time I went in on a Sunday morning, like at 7 a.m., you know, to kind of limit the amount of people. Some people don't like that store because they put in all the automatic registers. Self-checkout. And I thought that was an improvement because now I don't have to deal with uh, a grumpy person at the front register. <laughs> but uh, last time I went in there, I went in to buy some paint. I went in to buy some spray paint also. So I just already motioned that there was a lady that was watching the front and I said, hey, you're going to go ahead and have to call a manager because here in the States, when you buy spray paint, now you got to get a manager because there's people that, there's kids, I guess, that get high on the paint fumes. You know, just go have a beer, dude. <laughs> just won't get that. But you have to be authorized by a manager, you know. More government meddling. But anyhow, so I motioned the lady over there. She was pretty pleasant. But the next thing, you know, she's telling me about her whole life story and how her she her daughter used to huff paint and this, that, or the other. And I'm like, okay, get me out of here, please. <laughs> but So if that's the only place that has craft paint, then uh, oh well. I like, I like getting things through Amazon. I don't have to go to the store, interact with people, because, you know, it takes 
part of your, it takes time to do that. It takes cost to go and drive. I mean, I don't, I don't live in somewhere that I've got to go 20 miles one way or anything, but um, I like Amazon, unless it's something I need immediately. But that's my Walmart story. I also call that the, the store that won't be named. So yeah, that upset me last year. But let me give you the same thing. Dick Sporting Good went on the whole, oh, well, we're going to, we're not going to sell, uh, we're going to put restrictions on, on ammunition and stuff like that to people that um, buy. I mean, it's not like I'm buying that much. I mean, but, you know, I like to go to the range. The daughter wants to go to the range and we haven't been able to, well, for different reasons now. Now there's a shortage and we're not going to cut into what we have, but um Dix did the same thing, you know, treat law-abiding law citizens like criminals, right, and not sell to them. But you go to Dix, and you don't you don't deal with Wall Martians. You don't deal with people that are, you know, uh, the people of Walmart. So that's the difference. I don't mind going in there. Now, I don't go to a sporting goods store very often, especially an overpriced one. But uh, I'll go back there again. So it's not the only determining factor, but uh, when you add all the pluses and the minuses, I just assume not to go there. That and the, towards the end, I had to talk my daughter into going. She really, I was like, well, I need to go get some brushes at Walmart. And she's like, Daddy, I want to stay in the car. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go in that store. And she was scared of the, <laughs> the people that might encounter in there. Of course, she doesn't like going into game stores either. She, uh, she thinks. He used to tell us that there's nothing to fear in there. Nobody in there has ever kissed a girl. And he busted out laughing the first time I heard her. She heard saying that. I'm surprised they sell. Um, I'm surprised they sell this craft paint at Walmart because the craft paint, all of it that I've seen, is made in the U.S. and Walmart's known for not making anything, selling anything made in the United States. <laughs> all this cheap ass paint, it's all U.S. made. You know, this is um, Norcross, Georgia, is uh, folk art. And I think Americana is somewhere else in Georgia as well. Apple Barrel, Americana, Apple Barrel, folk art, all those are made in the U.S. I'm fine if it's made in other countries, as long as, uh, you know, it's a non-evil country. How about that? This stuff's made in France. Vive la France. I got no problem with French products. Okay. Now, the trick here is, so we've done the edge, the edging on the basing here, okay? And, um, but we need it to dry because we don't want to put the grass, it'll end up sticking to that paint. And um, <laughs> everyone very nice here, but I shop late at night. Yeah, it's, um, that I don't want to spend a time in line, you know, or anything. So, you know, <laughs> 50 cents. Yeah, they're cheap. It's it's too cheap, honestly. Um, you, you, if you Amazon this, they want like $6 for this. I'm not paying $6 for this. <laughs> you know, so. Um, it's not something I'm in dire need for. So. All right, we got to wait for those guys to dry a little bit. And um, I got to go wake up Sleeping Beauty. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. We'll leave the camera rolling and I'll come back in a few and maybe, just maybe this will be dry enough that we can do some grassing and tufting. 
before I leave uh, for the morning. So um, this is, um, we'll leave you there with those guys. I'll be right back. One thing you gotta make sure that when you do this next step, you cover this up because you don't wanna do this dusting and then end up getting these fibers all over this and then it can be an issue. So let's go and grab. Gonna get a snack, I get it. No, that's not a beer. <laughs> I could do without alcohol. It's not important. I don't want to be told I can't have a drink. Because I'm addicted to freedom, but I know I could deal with that. container this is um, this is multi-uses it cleans it, it cleans off um, completely right I'm going through my supplies a lot quicker than I ever have, and that's mostly due to the fact that I'm doing this hobby 10 times more often than I used to. And I'm not exaggerating much. I'm, I'm really kicking ass. Doing this, I think any of you guys get anything out of it, but I sure am. It keeps me on, on uh, task. Mmm. So let's take a look at this and see where we're going to put grass. I kind of use this as a filler. So whether there's boo-boos or something like that, like I'll put this stuff up to the edge of the stand of uh, the original stand of the figure, but sometimes it still shows. So I use this to kind of fill that area up. So we definitely want some there. Let's 
Just go completely around his foot. I think that may be the only areas that I definitely want to get that stuff on it. So it's a boo-boo filler. All right, then we're going to put some grass that's growing over here. some that's here now this is a step terrain type army which means I don't think I'm going to use a whole lot of bushes I don't think I'm going to use any bushes at all I may do some tufts but we'll see how it goes we don't need to make these guys air it either just uh Let's go with this and see what we got. If we got to add more to it, it's not a big deal. All right. So we're going to take this guy and hopefully this does not stick to the sides. If it does, then it's just inconvenient. It's only two freaking stands, so. And then I'll take the end of a brush and we'll push this stuff down. This flock I've had for over almost 20 years. I bought it, it's from Scenic Express. And I forget if this is the farm meadow or something like that, blend. It's the first static grass I ever used because I used the Woodland Scenics little um, crumblies first. And I don't seal over it or anything. Oh, that looks pretty good. We're not done with it. Do the same thing with this one. Take another sip. Which army? This is this army is later Hungarian. This is the Hungarian Black Army of Matthias Corvinus. So these guys fight my medieval Germans. These guys fight Ottoman Turks. These guys fight Mitch's Hussites. That battle for sure when these guys are done, those insolent bastards. Uh, what else? Uh, late 1400s army. So they're contemporary to, they're, they're after the Hundred Years War and before the Renaissance, so or before the interesting stuff. I didn't know anything about them until um, I started building this army. So, you know, of course it's historical wargaming. Hopefully you're learning about history as you're doing it. That's the, that's the whole point in my book. Uh, you're not learning about games workshop fluff. Um, that's why historical wargaming has always appealed to me. I'm learning about real things and partaking in history, so to speak. Book 443C. I have a feeling these guys just crushed the, the Turks. We'll have to build a, a dumbed down version of them to do a match pair army against the Turks, but, but it should be a good fight against the Germans for sure. I didn't know this guy actually went to war with, uh, with the Germans and actually took Vienna and held it for maybe it was three years or seven years. I don't remember, but he took Vienna. I was like, 
damn. That's pretty cool. But these were all mercenaries. And there's several rumors on why it was called the Black Army. Uh, one rumor is that they used Black and Dharma. But Black and Dharma really didn't come in vogue until uh, maybe 100 years later um, or so. And um, the other one is that they took the name of one of their commanders, which was known as so-and-so the Black. And, um, but, you know, it wasn't African troops. Um, it wasn't um, because of their armor, so... Um, thank goodness, I wouldn't want a whole bunch of guys in, in black, darkened armor that would look, um, it looked wrong. It just wouldn't have the right look to it in you know, that way, because it just looks wrong. That's the, that's where I take artistic license. Sometimes you take things, it just doesn't look believable enough if you do it. So that's just one of those things that even if that was the case, I'm not going to build a bunch of guys where every guy is painted black, so... Or, you know, the darkened stuff that they used in the, at the end of the 1500s, early 1600s, with the, with the black and treated armor to prevent rust, like they did in a 30 years war and stuff. Um, just wouldn't look right. So we added some, um, some color on their helmets so that they all, all look like the same guy. And um, they are going to have some heraldry, but they're not really going to have their own heraldry. It's going to be, you know, more focused on uh, the Hungarian heraldry of like the whole thing. It's like, the, you know, they, they come to fight for them and they'll have, you know, Hungarian flags or Corvinus, Corvinus's stuff, you know, um, but not necessarily the Rome. So shields really aren't prevalent for the Knights. In this time period, they kind of got out of style. They really didn't help them any anymore. Firearms were starting to become more and more popular during this time period. Supposedly, this guy had a, one in five guys needed to have a firearm, which was a very high percentage for that time period. Um, so, like the people that are in the war wagons, well, I'm gonna, they're all going to have firearms here. Um, And it'll be the first army that I do that has, I got my medieval Germans, but I didn't build the war wagons for them, but I'm not going to make them because you make them generic and then you can't put Hungarian type stuff on them. Well, um, they'll be, they'll be Hungarian doubt for sure. Okay. So we've got some grass on there. Let's go to tough land and uh, get us some toughs. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're good. I might actually be able to pull this off. Serbians, Ottomans, Italian Kandana, Wallachian, Hussites. Yeah, there you go. Medieval Germans, Poles, uh, Russians, Albanians. Who else? The Serbs were pretty much knocked out of the picture when this guy came to power. The... Um, but I may do an earlier, some earlier units as well to for his, do his dad. His dad was a pretty, pretty good commander. Well, Yano Sonyadi, and um, he um, stopped the Turks at Belgrade in 1456, I think, and then died of the plague there. So um, his flag's a little different, and. Um, He's got, um, he would have Serbian allies and stuff like that. But after that, the Ottomans took over Serbia and the Serbs ended up becoming uh, allies of the Ottomans. Anyhow, uh, where are my tufts these days? Oh, here they are. Here's one. Nope, nope. That's my green stuff, which is down here. All right. All right, we got this one. We're not going to use the bushes. Okay, we're gonna use this. I'm not gonna use the bushes, because that's a little too bushy. Okay. 
Yeah, I was actually going to build a Wallachian army first. Um, but I can use the Wallachians for allies of these guys. Because the Wallachians allow me to do... Um, Let's do four of these. Soloi Silius. I can do Soloi Silius with Wallachians. I can't do Soloi Silius with this army. I can I can do Wimp Wars. They have one mandatory skirmisher, and they can replace the two war wagons with skirmishers as well. Plus, they have three light horse, so bam, they're Wimp Wars. So. Let's get two of these. Before I get started on this, I'm going to check and make sure that she's getting ready so she doesn't end up hating herself. I'll be right back. Speaking of Wallachians, I'm uh, I'm reading a historical novel on Dracula right now. I'm more than halfway done. I'm not reading it. I'm having it read to me. If I had to find time to actually sit down and look at a book, I just wouldn't get any reading done. I'd rather do this. Um, and I guess I could paint and... Um, I guess I could and do the uh, audible as well, but um, I'd rather, this keeps me on track a lot more doing these little videos. So like I said, if you guys watch them, that's cool. If you don't, hey, they help me. And um, as Conan would say, the hell with you. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm doing them for me. The fact that they can benefit anybody else, that's awesome. I appreciate the interaction. A couple of you guys kept me up uh, last night. We're all gonna end up crashing at like nine, eight thirty at night. You guys got the mental juices going, so I appreciate that. All right, so we're gonna put one of those there. Let's just put it there. Paint what you know and glue what you know. Now, I don't know if these are meant to be self-adhesive, but they sure as hell are not self-adhesive enough for me. So, um, I definitely put these guys on here, and we squish these things in. And, and the fact that this basing is a little squishy, I'm sure if you look at the instructions what this is recommended for, you got to wait like 24 hours. I ain't waiting no damn 24 hours. I got I got figures to pay. So I wait like six and it's still squishy a little bit. So I squeeze this stuff in back into the material. Okay. And um, let's see. Let's put another one. Let's put another one. I don't mind having some barren space. Let's put another one here. I don't want to be too symmetrical. I want to be a little artsy. <laughs> I ran into um, several years ago someone that my wife knew a friend of hers at michael's a craft store and she recognized me i forget who it was or at this time but i remember at the time i recognized her and she goes oh what are you doing in this store and i'm like you don't understand i'm the artsy one okay <laughs> 
I belong in the craft store. Yeah, we're gonna put some of the, some of this that grows on blood beside this rock over on this side. You could spend a lot of time in a craft store, or Joanne's Fabrics, or you know, there's stuff in there other than people that make, uh, you know, knitting and stuff. I don't do any knitting, but I do crafty stuff. Uh, yeah, let's put, let's do this one. It's kind of big. I don't watch sports. I go to craft stores. <laughs> oh, really? You gonna you gonna act up on me? All right. We have ways of dealing with you. This happy little weed is growing there. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, come on, focus. Ah, it looks like crap here. So, 720 video doesn't do it. All right, let's see what we got in here. You like both. I take it you mean crafty stuff and sports. I don't watch sports at all. I got that from my dad. He never did. And um, thankfully, because what I also got from my dad is my love of history. I wouldn't be doing this stuff if it wasn't for him, so. And I live in a college town, so bad sports fans are everywhere. Like bad gamers. Okay, so let's find a place for, to put these tufts. I know it's gonna be kind of tight in here. I don't want to put it right in the middle. It's too obvious. This is probably a decent place for it. Right here. Put another one back here. I'm using foam, so picture is small. I'm using foam too, so picture is small. <laughs> I'm not a. I'm not buying a camera to film. Sorry, folks. I'm using my phone, and uh, it's done me well so far. So. Just one more thing I can use. I don't have a phone to make phone calls. I, I rarely call on a phone. It's I, I surf on it and um, watch television, so to speak, and um, and film videos with it and edit videos with it. Uh, now we got some goop on here. Let's get rid of that. We only need maybe one more of these to put in here. We'll put it, uh, let's see, we'll put it, we'll put it over on this side. Yeah, I rarely call anybody on the phone. Okay, I think we're good with that. So we'll let these guys dry, we'll take pictures of them later. Get you guys salivating there, motivating. None of this stuff that I'm doing should, um, should discourage you guys from doing the same. It should be like, hey, uh, Tony makes it look easy. I can do that, exactly. It's just a trick. 
You guys know what to do. So. Hmm. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I may, I may come back later and highlight those rocks a tiny little bit so they pop a little bit more. But uh, there you have it. One stand of skirmishers and a stand of uh, the heavy infantry. They're for Hungarians. So, yeah, I really like this guy on the end with the split split helmet and the two red and the white. So, got a little bit of little bit of oomph to him, make him a little different. So, um, I didn't know that. I thought they were just flat out slow. That doesn't make sense. Their knights are really pretty. Luke really likes that army. Uh, Yeah, I got a Serb stand that I can do with my in my Ottomans, but I ended up giving up the artillery piece. So, you know. All right, there you have it, folks. So we'll be back on this weekend, I'm sure. But uh, these are these two figures uh, completely done. All right, we'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Have a good have a good weekend.